Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. I was just getting pushed by a drone there as you noticed. Well, last episode I'd noticed that some of the crop, the, the wheat wasn't getting replanted. Now the reason for that, Dash tells me, is because it's a vin vanilla mechanic that you don't always get a seed from wheat. So today's episode we're going to fix that. There's two ways. The easy way is to do it like the barley does. We simply right click barley when it's fully grown and it will break and give you either a seed and some wheat or in the barley's case it just gives you barley uh, so but this time I want to do it slightly differently I'd like to do it by planting the seeds deliberately so let's start with that shall we so what we're going to do today is build a new program I've got, got, got a drone prepared already and they've given it a name planter so we're going to create a new program with a condition in this time we haven't done conditions so far so we're going to start off with a start piece here. And the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to pick up some seeds from an inventory. So we need to do that fairly straightforward this one. I've done this before. Import from inventory, put that down there like that. I'll just scroll out a bit, see if I can scroll down a bit, see if we can make this a little bit smaller so we can get all the pieces in that we need. And then we're going to go and check for an item. This is where the condition one comes in. So here we need to condition block. So we're going to use this condition block here and you'll notice this has got different different faces on it this time off sides so it's got the area piece it's got the item piece and it's got a text piece here and the text piece is where it jumps to and then what we're going to put on the bottom of this we're going to put a sleep program here or standby like that so we need to define two areas first of all we need to define an area where we're going to import stuff from so we're going to go and go to the seed chest and pick it up from there. And the second one is going to define an area where we're going to where we're going to search for. So let's have a look at that first of all. So what I want to do is I want to check. I want to get the from this box here. Let's get this two two uh, GPS tools out of the way. And I'm going to take it. The seed is going to come out of this chest. So we shall left and shift left, shift right click and left click it, and you'll see that the two points are now set. So we can come along here and then set this one up. I will use the axe just to open up, just in case. We're going to put that one there like that. And then we need to tell it what we're going to take out of the chest. We'll take out a seed. So we'll just bring across one of these here and put that onto that. And we're just going to right click and say search for seeds. Like that. And that's what we need to search for. We don't care about metadata, in fact, we wish we want seeds. I'm not doing anything else, so that's just fine. So here comes the condition part. So there's three things in this we need to specify an area. So let's have a look at this first of all. What we're going to do is check for air. This one's the one that actually caught me out for a while. I was going to, how do I see when something's not there? So we need to check for air. So that's the condition. So if there's air blocks in there, so any of these being more than one, then we shall do, sort that out. So let's go and define the area first of all. I really need this corner here. So with a bit of luck, I've got a block somewhere that will help me. I hope I've got a block that will help me somewhere. Easy enough. Let's just put down a seed. Like this. And then we can say, I want to actually check this area here. So we shall right click that one, and that's of course we're using this one again, doesn't make any difference. Actually, I want to break this seed because I want to test it with that, but we'll do that in a second. And then the other one I want to do is down here. So I need a seed in here as well, and so let's just left click that. And then this is the area we want to check. So we want to plant this area when any of these blocks have got seeds, in, no seeds in them. So I'll just take this, break that seed out of the way, come back over here, and break the other one. I need this actually for later on like that I think the I think the drones just picked up that seed it has so I'll put take it back again so now we've got these two areas we can right click this just to be absolutely we're holding the hand actually is fine we can see what the area is so that's right so this is where the condition is so we're going to use this condition here of this this position we're checking for area and it's what it's got no output label specified so we need a text label so we're going to what we're going to say is we're going to give this a, a value, we'll just say plant seed. And press escape and that's done. So now we should be able to actually program this in. So let's do that. 
Well, let's watch what the drone does. In fact, we're going to use the program for doing the debugging tool for doing the drones. So let's remove this out of my hand now. And let's have a look at the, what this drone will do. So let's put it down here, first of all. And it's going to go and trundle off. And it's picked up the seeds, as we expected to do. In fact, I should have put a... No, I've got a standby at the end of it. So we enable our debugging on the drones. So I think we have to enable the Entity Tracker first of all, E for Entity Tracker. And since we've got it already programmed up here, I should be able, be able to put Control D on that one. And as you can see, I've enabled it. So let's press U. Um, enable Pneumatic Armor, what's Drone Debugging? That's the one we want. So just by selecting it here, you'll see it's changing this thing here. So it's saying, no block can be inter interacted with on this block. Well, that's fine, because it's got the seeds already. And this one is says, uh, nowhere to jump to, going back to start. And it also says something else, which I can't read because it's too fast. <laughs> but what you can do to sort that one out is you can actually put in a delay here. So it's not going between these two because it's got nowhere to go to. So that's fine. Let's just break this out and come back and fix this program and actually do some useful work with this next. Big jump. So I'll make sure I've got that in my hand today. So what we want to do is now create a jump point. So here is a label. That's where we're going to come into here. And the label always needs a piece to connect to and a text puzzle. So this is where we're going to connect it to. So middle click this and drag it across to here like that. So that's where it's going to go to when this condition is true. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click the blocks with some seeds. So let's set that up, open up this one. And we need the right click block, which is this one here. Right click a block and the direction is um, low to middle and it's placing the directions bottom. Now this is the bit that actually caught me out. Quite a while, it took me a, few, a while to figure this out on here. Of course it needs an area. So let's go and define the area next. This is the one with no positions in it. So let's go and define the area. So the area I need to do is this block here. And I want to go and put it to this block over here. That's why I took these two corner blocks out, if you haven't figured it out already. So we've actually got this area as a, we'll just highlight it, you'll see. This is the whole of that area. I think, did I pick up that piece? No, I think the drone picked it up. It's quicker than I am sometimes. Let's pick it out of here and take the drone, of course and put it back in again. So we've got the fertile soil in here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to specify this area as we're going to click. And the default for this is bottom. It says placing direction to bottom. Obviously, when you're placing seeds, you can't place them on the bottom of the, of the um, block. You've got to place them on the top. So we can click show area and we can see where it's actually going to place these things. Uh, did I specify the area? Or did I not yet specify? I did, yes. Sh stop showing area. Of course, because it's under the ground. That's right. You can't see it. So stop showing the area. It doesn't matter what all the order is here so much, in this case anyway, from, from what I understand. And then we're going to go to a place, just to, just to give it the robot somewhere to sit when we're not actually doing anything else. So here's our go-to location, like that. And where we're going to go to is we'll take this one here and we'll just put a block. Let's give it, say, um, let's put it down here. So if I left click, oh no, I want it to sit on top of the block. That was right. I made that mistake last time. I haven't got my I haven't got my blocks on there I like to use. This line blocks, I must have put them down. So we'll use this position here. So we'll left click and right click that one, or the other way around, and break it off. <laughs> it's gone in there. <laughs> So we're going to use that position to go to when it's not active. So now we're going to specify this position here when it's not active. Now what we're going to do is then go to standby, because that's finished of that operation here. Let's so take another standby piece out of here. But because this thing runs too fast sometimes, let's do something else. Let's give it a sleep. So now give it a sleep. It's a white piece. So let's go and find the sleep piece. It's this one, weight. We can take the weight piece here and put it down here. Then we can take a text label 
and then if you look at this here now you right click the no press i for info on this one it takes you straight to the page so you can say give it a time so we can give it a seconds in tick or we can give it seconds so for example if i want to do it uh, five second way i can either specify five se five seconds or 20 times five is 100 so we'll just do five seconds on the text so let's right click this now and specify five seconds like that and this program should now work let's put the drone back up again and put everything back into the pre-program the drone and put him down let's see what he does so he's picked up the seeds now he's going around all of these blocks here because he knows he's got some to do but i haven't been able to tell you yet which one and you see it's planted these seeds here now so then it should come back here and sit down as you can see it is doing it's got the weight white one here so it's a five second wait so let's put the entity tracker on this again i think it's doing something slightly wrong because it shouldn't be going through every time because all of these places have now got seeds so let's go and check what it's doing so let's go um control d oh, it's off it's off again <laughs> i have to wait for him to come back when he comes back we'll press control d on it there he goes so I can be real to control D on that now press U and then have a look at the debugging drone and you can see it's going through here so condition was evaluated to true so what you can then do is you can right click this and it shows you the area it's working in which is great and you can shift right, right click it again to stop showing the area so it's doing all of this area here so it shouldn't be going back and changing the checking all of these places should it so let's have a look at this program again see what i've done wrong because so it's this condition any of these i didn't click check for air did i okay that's what i made a mistake any blocks being more than one that's got an air in it then it'll stop so we're going to fix this condition now so he comes back here he'll come back in a second when he's finished doing his checks and we'll just break him again that's why I, that's why i put him there I should have, I think I picked him up. I know the robot picked him up, didn't he? Let's just carefully move that out of the way and then pick up the robot. Take this out of its hand as well. And we could put these seeds away. We don't need these seeds anymore. And come over here and then reprogram the robot or the drone. I should really call it drone, shouldn't I? So that's now got the area here. So this has got the right thing in. So let's program this in it. So it shouldn't go through the cycle this time. So let's right click it set it down now he's got the seeds now he's going to go through let's see if we can get reach him up again i get close enough yes i can and let's look at the you press u for the debugging window so this time he's going around here because there are no blocks which has got that condition is true so it does tell you here the condition was evaluated to false so let's just break this block again and you'll see he starts off and doing his his little rounds and he will come back and he will put this one back in here so that sorts him out and then he sits back down here as we expect him to do so and that's it so that's that program and it's working and you can press u on the debugger and you can see what it's doing now it's got nothing to do so when this wait finished here which was just five seconds it went back up to the start and then carries on this loop so it sits on top of this chest of course i could remove him and put him back down somewhere else but I think that's. I think what his behaviour is fine. The only thing is, if this drone wants to pick up some stuff, it, I'm not sure if it can actually put into the chest. It seems to be able to work just fine, so I'm happy to leave it like that. Well, I've just about covered all all the stuff I want to do in drones. There's a few more components which are interesting. Um, the logistics one this is this piece here it's basically a start logistics it's just a start piece a lot logistics piece and a standby piece in a in a logistics drone and that's it you can actually go and check it out i've got some logistics drones around so that's gonna well i've got one what i can do with this logistics drone is you can right click him and debug him like you can with any other entity wherever he's gone to can't sorry so i can see him he's, he makes his little mess in fact i can turn him on of course e to do my thing 
this is my target here let's go up and have a look at this guy so we can press that debug on him again control d mm -hmm. and then we can press u on it and we can see what it's doing so it's basically just a logistics one oh and an area so it's a fairly large area i think um, you can do the math <laughs> it looks like it's 32 by 32 by 32 yeah so it's doing a 32 by 32 by 32 area this logistics drone so that's all it is in that logistics drone i don't want to highlight the area because if i do that i'm going to get a lot of lag and i don't want to do that now there was um turn that entity tracking off again there is something else as well in the book i talked about last week i couldn't find pneumatic boots what that is let's go back to the index up here and you can see here I've got items which are which you've got the exclamation mark about on them, which other ones I haven't actually read about. So you can go along here. Now last time I read I found I couldn't find the pneumatic um boots. Well I found it and then you can read it. So here anything you've not read is on this side and uh, and then here it starts armor overview and onwards. These are things I have read. And sure enough the pneumatic boots is documented here. So it's just a question of finding it. And there's just these two sections. I think it's the case because everything else is, oh, uh, maybe not. We've got an area widget here. So these are the widgets for um, programming, which I haven't read either. But they come in later on. So in fact, there's actually four different widget, four sections in the book. So one's widgets. I'm not sure that's a great order of things, but that's nothing to do with pneumatic after repressurized. So the next thing we want to look, have a quick look at was actually the gold processing or the processing of armor. I get quite a bit of armor and I come along and put it together and then smelt it down. So what I've been doing here is I've been smelting it down in this into this is a little nugget cast which will basically deal with both gold armor and it takes a bit of it's slow but I'm not getting that armor in that fast. And it will also deal with chain armor and iron armor, of course. And then they've got um, a wooden storage crate here, which is being extracted out of here with an extracting hopper here. And then we can come along here and have a look at that. That's being fed into here, which is a draw controller. The draw controller is then basically feeding into these blocks here. And there's, the third one here is just a, a frame draw, and there's just a storage draw, but it's not locked. You can't see that so easily yes you can see that there's no lock symbol on it and what so what that means is that any items coming in here well first of all go into this these two if they can and if they can't they'll end up in here underneath this here i've got a, a little hopper which is actually pointing down into you can just about see it, i think yeah you can see here it's pointing into a, a hopper duct and then it's being fed into this chest so if i smell anything else it'll end up in this chest um it's quite neat, isn't it? I quite like that. It's pretty good. Now, what, what would be nice would be to see if I could automate the crafting of the armour again, because it's sort of time-consuming. It's not desperately time-consuming. I only have to go and check it once in a while. But I do have to check it, and it might be better if I didn't have to check it. So I'm thinking I might be able to do this with um, somewhere or other. You see in here I've got some... I've already got enough to do boots, for instance. So we could take some boots out of here and and armor chest plates. So if we can control shift click those out of that, you see they've got the two armor chest plates. And the boots, now that'll give me four ingots of gold. And the armor chest plates will give me this eight, which is a it's actually a reasonable amount of gold. You saw how much of gold I've already got into my system. I'll leave that and we'll probably get some smaller versions of the uh, boots. So we'll leave those for the time being. Those are very useful. I've been using those for um, producing range upgrades, but I've got 64 already. Let's just turn that on, just to be on the safe side, just in case I misclick something into here. Like that. And then I can turn it off, and then it'll just drop, drop into the lava pool, which is just down here. And click it on again. That was, does, it does help when I haven't got my magnet hunter there, by the way. So that's how what I've been doing to get the gold, and that's all I've been doing to get the gold. I have mined some, but not very much. So, that's it for this episode. I hope you're enjoying the uh, Pneumaticraft series, because I'm really enjoying playing with that mod. It's quite uh, it's involved. I have made the sensor, um, universal sensor, but not done anything with that yet. 
I also built something else which is very actually surprisingly expensive. Let's have a look at the one I built. It's I haven't played with it yet because it has its limitations and I think it's on the second page of this this one. The programmable controller. So this is basically a controller. It's got a remote. I haven't done that either. It's got a printed circuit board, advanced pressure tube and the network registry. These are all these components. This one actually has got a network I.O. port, a GPS tool, and a transistors and a network data storage. So it's a, it's quite a quite an involved thing to make this. There's quite a lot of plastic involved in this. So that in that only it's got sixteen four twenty because it's got four in it, a diamond. And then another eight in this one here like that. And another nine in that one so you, you're getting up to 29 pieces of that before you start and of course the drone itself is also going to take another another one how much does that take oh yeah it leads lots because this is lots of plastic so there's a good lot of plastic involved in making that stuff so i'm going to but it has its limitations in fact we should go look on this here um when you come back to it and press hold down the shift button all right so it does, basically it doesn't do any flying around, which is good, but it says it's what it cannot do. So the excluded pieces tab for the information of what cannot be accepted. Items facing through this. I'm just wondering where it is. Basically you can't do lots of stuff. Oops. Hold a second. F1. F5. Somehow I got a zombie in the way there. <laughs> just on my outro. Well, that was really good, wasn't it? Let's go. Let's go back to the. Um, let's go back to my screen again. And say goodbye for now. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Bye. <laughs>